Hey guys, this is GB Wang, and I'm uh, in this video. What I'm going to do is uh, this is going to be a follow-up to my previous video, which was the unbeatable TVP uh, build. And I have a special guest with me here today. This is Dodecahedron. He is a uh, grandmaster player over in Southeast Asia, and this is uh, his one of many Smurf accounts. And so when we were playing these games, we were kind of goofing around, and we were on Skype, and I issued um, a challenge to him. I said, you know, I bet you can't beat my unbeatable uh, TVP. PvP build, and so he accepted the challenge, which was kind of like the basis for this game. And so in my um, previous video, I kind of showed how to execute this build, and so I want to talk about um, some of the other um, little tips and nuances that go into the build as well. And so the idea for this build, it actually, um, it was inspired by this other Grandmaster player, his name was Tang, and he created this um, ZVT build, he called it like a three-barrel bus, and it was pretty much like a, a three-staged kind of... Uh, like a a three staged attack that hits at um, pretty pretty decent timing windows for Terran, and it was kind of like a way to teach um, to teach uh, players to how to like structure their um, their ZVT as well. And so uh, this was kind of the idea here, and I'm pretty much the way I designed this build was to really give you three chances to win, and. Um, and part of it too is it's hitting at very critical timings. So in the first push, um, as you'd seen before, there was uh, Marines and Marauders um, attacking in his base. And so this push is the pre-warp gate push. Again, um, Protoss players, they're very slow to mobilize, but once they mobilize, they, are, they become incredibly powerful. And so this pre-warp gate push is designed to hit them at their most vulnerable period. And uh, more oftentimes against less experienced players, you can just outright, um, you can just outright kill them with the pre-warp gate push. The second push happens. Um, so it happens after um, after you you pull back. You know your marines and marauders if you're initially unsuccessful. And the idea here is you kind of create the illusion for him that oh you know it's um it's pretty much safe to expand now. It's kind of like metagaming because um, you know you've pulled your units back. He thinks that you're kind of retreating and that the mid game has started. But the way that I look at it. Um, like for him, the the idea is to create the illusion that the mid game has already started. Whereas for me, it's actually not even the mid game yet. It's just kind of like I'm prolonging the early game because my real opener hasn't even been shown yet. So, kind of like a different, um, like our chronology is a little bit different. The other reason for the second push is because it hits at a very critical junction. Because Protoss, most of the time, they've already expanded. And, um, but this is between their expansion and the development of a Colossus. You rarely see Colossus with this kind of a build. Sometimes when you push out with two Thors, there will be one Colossus, in which case it's not too big of a deal um, to handle. But I know like a lot of Terran players, and myself especially too, I don't understand Colossi. Like I have a lot of trouble kind of dealing with them once they're underway. So the second push is designed to stop that and pretty much outright kill them. But if the second push doesn't stop them, you also have a third push that hits at kind of around the same timing window, like a minute later or so, but at this time, they're already hurt pretty bad. They're not going to have any Colossi out, and you've probably um, obliterated their army as well. And so th that's pretty much... Um, you know the three phases of the attack and where they fall in the um, like in the windows from their like early game and mid game as well. Um, the other reason too why you use this build. So in terms of warp gate units, um, I tend to think of warp gate units as actually better than barracks units, but they only tend to be better in a small window. Like um, they tend to be better before stim comes up. And so in this first push, you know there is no stim. There's concussive shells, but Protoss doesn't have a lot of units, so that's okay. But once you research stim, the um, the warp gate uh, the warp gate units automatically they become inferior. And then so next you um you know you may wonder why do I use Thor? And uh, I've actually really started to take a liking to Thor because one, in this case, it's especially clutch as you'll see in this matchup. Thor is a massive unit, so they can break force fields, and force fields are like sentries are one of the gateway units that consistently do well versus barracks units because they can cut off your army supply. And so let's take a look at this first push. So 
Um, so this time he actually he ends up having a sentry out, and this sentry, had he not had it out, that probably could have cost him the game. And so he does a very good job. He's pretty much delaying uh, delaying me until his warp gate research comes up. And so um, so I'm not going to push the action. Part of it is because I'm spawned in cross position. It's hard for me to get in reinforcements, and I know this guy is like kind of um, slick. So I'm going to let him let him do his thing. Although if you look at the reaction that I forced from him, he he goes two gate robo instead of a one gate expand. So this is very important because if he went one gate expand, that's one way in which his econ will actually um, get ahead of me. But if he expands like right now, he's going to get no benefit from from his expansion by the time I push out. And the other thing I force out of him too is a forge. He ended up throwing down a cannon um, as a defense, so that's 150 minerals down the drain. Although now he's actually researching plus one, which might not be too bad of an idea. But let's see what happens here now. I have my MM research is done. I'm starting to research Stim because this is going to be a Stim Thor kind of a push. Um, you know, later on. And so second factory is coming up. And now he is just, if you notice, he just threw down his nexus. By the time that comes up, the two Thor should be up and um, there's not going to be, um, like, he's going to derive no benefit from this expansion. And so pretty much entirely metagaming him. I'm really, what I'm doing is I'm juking him into into throwing down an expansion because if I throw down the expand, if he throws down the expansion, the game is um, more often than not, it's pretty much already over. And so a couple of things that I've been experimenting with, this build, I haven't... Um, uh, use this build as much as I, I've used a similar build versus Zerg. And so a couple of things that I've been thinking about doing, when I get the Thors out, I usually research plus one vehicle weapons because um, in this case you don't have to worry about being swarmed by Zerglings. And because Protoss units hit pretty hard, it's kind of nice to be able to eliminate them pretty quickly. And so that's why I get plus one weapons. One of the things that I had considered though is after this first push, you might want to put down like an engineering bay and get plus one weapons because if you look I have so many marines and marauders right now and um, and I'm only going to have two Thor when I do this push so really the damage dealers are the marines and marauders but again the Thors are the intimidating looking units and so it tends to encourage the Protoss units to try to destroy the Thors when in actuality the marines and marauders do just as much if not more damage when they're stimmed and so it's pretty much a lose-lose situation for Protoss like the ratio of units here is very good and it's like um you know like what is he going to focus on like it really doesn't matter because he's going to he's going to lose a lot so let's see what he does he actually had an uh, i think he had an observer just pass me by so he knew that i had thor and i remember he told me this on uh, on skype as well so he's seen everything he's seen the armory he's seen the two factories as well but let's see um let's see what he can do with that so now I've got my two Thor. I'm going to rem remember this is only a semi all and I'm only going to pull about eight or so SCVs and set that on auto repair as well. But let's see how he deals with it. Now, this is like a pretty a more common composition than you see in the previous video where I was just straight up hard countered. But he's got some sentries, which again, um, you know, they're, a they're an absolute joke now because I have Thors on the field. Like there there's nothing that the force fields can do. And also he's got immortals to counter Thor. But remember that one mortal alone is not enough to shut down Thor. And, um, and so now when I'm pushing out to, I'm also researching Infernal Pre-Igniter just because I have extra gas and there's nothing else to do. And I'm cranking out Hellions. In this case, I'm a little bit supply blocked again because this is kind of a, a supply intensive build. But, um, but real quick, let me just pause this. He does, um, he does something here that's really clever. Um, he's pretty big on map control and he ends up, he throws down a pylon here and pretty much what this is, is this is a stalling tactic. He knows that his army is absolutely inferior to mine. He actually had a, um, a, ro a robo bay down, but because of the urgency of the attack, he doesn't have time to throw down a colossus. So now he's just trying to stall for time, and I, I realize this when I, um, when I see this. And so, you know, so he's here, he's trying to eliminate my SEVs, and I end up responding to it eventually. But if you look, now I'm starting to engage. Look at his army, though. I mean, there, there's really nothing that he can do. He's going to try to throw down some force fields as well. And, well, maybe he doesn't throw down any force fields. There we go. Boom. Force fields are broken because of the Thor. So this is an absolutely clutch feature that the Thors can do. And then he... um. 
you know, like, uh, right now, I don't care about the Nexus, I'm just wasting fire, I'm going to disable his entire army. And I also, the other thing too is, I mean, he can try to attempt a base trade, but you don't have to have any of this. Like, I guess I realize it's a little bit late, but you can just lift off all of your buildings and just fly him over to his base, there's really nothing he can do. I mean, everything here, he's completely trash, you can't really make any units, I'm going to try to focus down his pylons as well, but here you can see I've already started lifting and making the Great Migration. And, um, and so again, like it, it just, it, it puts the Protoss in such a bad situation if they expand, and that's their natural instinct to expand, you know, after you pull away from their attack. And so at this point he has nothing and he, you know, he ends up leaving the game. So, so this is pretty much, um, you know, the, the other thing, as I had mentioned before, the, the alternative to maybe getting the plus one Thor attack, which I think might be better is the plus one NG bay. One thing to, or plus one attack for the Marine Marauders off of your, off of an NG bay that you build. But I do make, I do feel like it makes you a little bit vulnerable to like early gateway pressure, like four gate. But maybe you can just counter that as well by throwing down two bunkers. And so that's pretty much it um, for, the, for this talk. Hopefully you enjoyed it and um, keep on kicking butt. We'll see you next time.